Hello everybody, welcome to Griffin Stories. In this channel, I will be reading stories, starting from the author Roald Dahl, author of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I will slowly progress to other authors, and I will also be translating them to Chinese for those who would like to learn an extra language. Last time we saw Charlie, he was riding high above his hometown in the Great Glass Lift. Only a short while before, Mr. Wonka had told him that the whole gigantic fabulous chocolate factory was his. Grandma Josephine, Grandma Georgina, and Grandpa George were still in bed, the bed having been pushed on board just before takeoff. Grandpa Joe, as you remember, had got out of bed to go around the chocolate factory with Charlie. The great last lift was a thousand feet up and cruising along nicely. The sky was a brilliant blue. Everyone on board was wildly excited at the thought of going to live in the famous chocolate factory. Grandpa Joe was singing. Charlie was jumping up and down. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket were smiling for the first time in years, and the three old ones in the bed were grinning at one another with pink tubeless gums. When the world keeps this crazy thing up in the air, croaked Grandma Josephine. Skyhooks, said Mr. Wonka. You amaze me, said Grandma Josephine. Dear lady, you are new to the scene. When you have been with us a little longer, nothing will amaze you. These skyhooks, said Grandma Josephine. I assume one end is hooked onto this contraption we're riding in. Right? <clears throat> right, said Mr. Wonka. What's the other end hooked up to on, then? Said Grandma Josephine. Every day, I get deafer and deafer. Please remind me to call up my ear doctor the moment we get back. Charlie? Said Grandma Josephine. I don't think I trust the gentleman very much. Nor do I, said Grandma Georgina. He footles around. Charlie leaned over to the bed and whispered to the two old women, Please, don't spoil everything. Mr. Wonka's a fantastic man. He's my friend. I love him. Charlie's right, whispered Grandma Joe, joining in. Now you be quiet, Josie, and don't make trouble. Oh, we must hurry. We have so much time and so little to do. No, wait, wait, wait. Cross that out. Reverse it. Thank you. Now back to the factory, he cried, clapping his hands once and springing two feet in the air with two. Back we fly to the factory, but we must go up before we can come down. We must go higher and higher. What did I tell you, said Grandma Josephine. That man is cracked. Be quiet, Josie, said Grandma Jo. Miss Wonka knows exactly what he's doing. Oh, we must go higher, said Mr. Wonka. We must go tremendously high. Hold on to your stomachs. He pressed that brown button. The elevator shuddered, and then with a fearful whooshing noise, it shot vertically upwards like a rocket. Everybody clutched hold of everybody else, and as the great machine gathered speed, the rushing and whooshing sound of the wind grew outside grew louder and louder, and shriller and shriller, until it became a piercing shriek, and you had to yell to make yourself heard. Stop! yelled Grandma Josephine. Joe, you make him stop. I want to get off right this instant. Save us! yelled Grandma Josephine. Go down! yelled Grandpa George. No, no, no! Mr. Wonka yelled back. We've got to go up. But why? they all shouted at once. Why come up and now down? Because the higher we are when we start coming down, the faster we'll all be going when we hit. When we hit what? they cried. Oh, the factory, of course. You must be bonkers, said Grandma Josephine. Well, I'll be pulpified. We'll be scrambled like eggs, said Grandma G G Georgina. That is the chance that we shall have to take. Oh my, you're joking, said G Grandma Josephine. Tell us you're joking, please. Madam, I never joke. Oh, my dears, we'll be lixivated, the rest, the lot of us. More than likely, said Mr. Wonka. Grandma Josephine screamed and disappeared under the bedclothes. Grandma Georgina clutched Grandpa George so tight he actually changed shape. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket stood hugging each other, speechless with fright. Only Charlie and Grandpa Joe stood momentarily calm. They had traveled a long way with Mr. Wonka and had grown accustomed to surprises. But as the great elevator continued to shriek upward further and further away from the earth, even Charlie began to feel nervous. Mr. Wonka, he yelled above the noise, what I don't understand is why we've got to come down at such a terrific speed. My dear boy, if we do not come back down at a terrific speed, we'll never burst our way back into the roof of the factory. It's not easy to punch a hole in a roof as strong as that. But there's a hole in it already. We made it when we first came out, remember? Then we shall make another, said Mr. Wonka. Two holes are much better than one. Any brat will tell you that. 
higher and higher rushed the great glass elevator until soon they could see the countries and oceans of the earth spread out below them like a map. It was very beautiful, mind you, but when you are standing on a glass floor looking down, it gives you a very nasty feeling. Even Charlie was beginning to feel frightened now. Mr. Wonka! Don't you think this is about high enough? Very nearly, but not quite. Do not talk to me now, please. Do not disturb me. I must watch things carefully at this stage. Split second timing, my boy. That's what it's uh, supposed to be. You see this green button? I must press it at exactly the right instant. If I'm just half a second late, then we'll go way too high. What happens if we go too high? Asked Grandpa Joe. Do you please stop talking and let me concentrate. At that precise moment... Grandma Josephine poked her head out from under the sheets and peered over to the edge of the bed. She grabbed on she grabbed onto Mr. Wonka by the coattails and yanked him backwards onto the bed. No, 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 let me go, let me go. Quick, quick, quick. I have things to see too. Don't disturb the pilot. You madman, shrieked Grandma Josephine. You'll get you get us back home this instant. Let me go. I've got to press that button or we'll go too high. Let me go, let me go. Or Grandma Josephine hung on. Charlie, press the button, the green one. Quick, quick, quick. Charlie leapt across the elevator and banged his thumb down on the green up button. But as he did so, the elevator gave a mighty groan and rolled over to the side, and the rushing, whooshing noise stopped altogether. There was an eerie silence. Oh my, too late! Oh my goodness, we're cooked, said Mr. Wonka. As he spoke, the bed with the three old ones and Mr. Wonka on the top lifted gently off the floor and hung suspended in midair. Charlie and Grandpa Joe and Mr. and Mrs. Bucket also floated upwards, so that in a twink, the entire company, as well as the bed, were floating around like balloons inside the Greek glass elevator. Now look what you've done, said Mr. Wonka, floating about. What happened? Grandma Josephine called out. She had floated, cleared the bed, and was humming near the ceiling in her nightshirt. Did we go too far? Charlie asked. Too far? cried Mr. Wonka. Of course we went too far. You know where we've gone, my friends? We've gone into orbit. They gaped, they gasped, they stared. They were too flabbergasted to speak. We are now rushing around the earth at 17,000 miles an hour. How does that grab you? I'm choking, gasped Grandma Georgina. I can't breathe. Of course you can't, said Mr. Wonka. There's no air up here. He swam across under the ceiling to a Barton marked oxygen. He pressed it. You'll be fine now. Breathe away. This is the queerest feeling, Charlie said, swimming about. I feel like a bubble. It's great, said Grandpa Joe. It feels as though I don't weigh anything at all. You don't. None of us weighs anything. Not even one ounce. Oh, what piffle! I weigh 137 pounds exactly, said Grandma Georgina. Not now you don't. You are completely weightless. The three old ones, Grandpa George, Grandma Georgina, and Grandma Josephine, were trying frantically to get back into bed, but without success. We've got to get you... We've got... You out of bed at last, said Grandpa Joe, laughing. Shut up and help us get back, snapped Grandma Josephine. Oh, forget it, said Mr. Wonka. You'll never stay down. Just keep floating around and be happy. The man's a madman, cried Grandma Georgina. Watch out, I say, or he'll lixivate the lot of us.